Recording in progress. And first question is the easiest name, spelling, official title, please. Uh, my name is H.L. Greenberg, MD. I'm a board certified dermatologist at Las Vegas Dermatology. And yes. I'm the founder of Las Vegas Dermatology. Absolutely. Now, I, I saw some articles, I was doing some digging about this COVID caused hair loss. You're saying it's totally a thing that can happen and you're seeing it here in the Las Vegas Valley. Yeah, we've been seeing it since the start of the pandemic, you know, around January of 2020 even, we started seeing, you know, when the first cases of COVID we saw in the clinic that, that uh, were uh, patients who came in who had COVID and then you know the the town was shut down in March but people started to lose their hair and didn't know why and there's a condition called telogen effluvium and we're noticing that that is related you know when people have a febrile illness a systemic uh, problem as well as COVID uh, they can lose their telogen hairs which are the resting hairs. Does this hair grow back or I mean is it a form of balding? Sure, so uh, when somebody has cancer and they have uh, uh, chemotherapy, they have what's called antigen effluvium, and all of their hair just falls out pretty much, the growing hairs, that's about 80% of our hairs. The resting hairs, which is like 10 to 20% of, of our hairs, that's the telogen hair, and that's what falls out when you have a systemic disease like COVID. Uh, you can see a, a lot of hair loss, but those telogen hairs, those resting hairs, will come, you, th those ones are gone, uh, but you will get new antigen hairs that grow out. I know um, just from two years of doing these um, COVID stories that when I ask medical doctors things about COVID, the answer is a lot of this is new and they're still figuring things out. Um, is that what you're seeing or, or I mean, what would be your, your answer to someone saying, my hair is falling out and it started after I had COVID? Well, I think it's a yes and. So yes and because we do see and we have seen for years that people who have uh, systemic illnesses, whether they're in an intensive care unit, and we've seen it most, the most frequent uh, telogen effluvium cases I see are like women who've given birth. Uh, so it's a pregnancy related issue a lot of times. Anybody who's had a systemic issue can have hair loss. And telogen effluvium is that systemic response. Do you know too the types of cases? Are they people who had severe um, cases, had to be even hospitalized from COVID, or just you know someone who had a cough? It, it really it runs the gamut. So uh, you know, in unexplained hair loss, uh, it's one of the questions that I ask, and I, I, I like to get a detailed history when it comes to hair loss because a lot of things can cause hair loss, whether it's um, you know some kind of metabolic disorder where you have an issue with your thyroid or your red blood cells, um, you know, like anemia, you could have a dietary issue where you're not getting uh, certain nutrients that, that is making it so you're not growing hair. Uh, and then there are a bunch of systemic diseases. We had the whole Chris Rock being slapped thing, which brought uh, attention to alopecia areata, for instance. There's a lot of different causes of hair loss and a lot of different types of hair loss. Any idea, at least with the COVID caused hair loss that we're seeing, how long this can last after someone has and recovers from COVID-19? So telogen effluvium, typically it's a, it's a one-time thing and then it's done. However, there's something called chronic telogen effluvium where the telogen hairs are constantly just, just coming out. So uh, it, it could be that somebody has COVID and they could have, you know, we've heard of the long COVID and whether this, you know, chronic telogen effluvium can be part of that, I, I think, like like you said earlier, this is something that we're still learning. What does this look like to somebody? This telogen effluvium. Yeah, so telogen effluvium. It looks like, you know, it, it looks like to them all their hair is falling out because anytime we start to lose hair, uh, people just freak out, which is normal. So you'll brush your hair and you'll see it looks like there's more hair in this brush than than there normally was. Or you look in this the shower basin and you see a bunch of hairs there that that have um, collected. And we should lose about 200 hairs a day. So uh, when it feels like it's more than that, and you may not know it or you may know it, people. Um, it, it, it's something that someone else will notice, but I'm sorry, it's something that the patient will notice, but someone else may not necessarily notice that they're losing their hair. So you may come in and say, it feels like all my hair is falling out. But in reality, I, I may not see it, but because of your story and you tell me the story of systemic illness and that you used to have nice thick hair and now you've lost a bunch of hair, that makes me think of telogen effluvium. 
understandable. Uh, you know, too, there's been that, that reaction of, I mean, stress, the, the pandemic and the stress that comes with it, it can also cause people to lose some hair, too. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're still, you know, the governor still has us under a state of emergency uh, as we give this discussion now. It's May 18th. That, that state of emergency doesn't end until May 20th. The stress that I have seen during this pandemic has been outrageous. Uh, people come in, you know, scared still. And when you're fearful, when you're you know, living in a state of high anxiety, it's not uncommon to see many different types of skin disorders, such as rashes or, you know, even people pulling their hair out. Any weird things, other things that you've seen after the, the start of all of this? Uh, you know, um, it, it's just, it's been a very difficult and stressful time for a lot of people. I give my patients a lot of grace when they come in, uh, mainly because, uh, you know, the, the students are stressed and the parents are stressed. There's, there's a lot of stress-related conditions, anxiety, um, it's been a very difficult time. And I think that the more we try to normalize what's going on, such as with the telogen effluvium, look, you've had a systemic disease, you've lost hair as a result of the systemic disease, the telogen hairs, the resting hairs. This is something we've seen across disease states for many years. This is not atypical and it's gonna come back. I think you know things like that are very helpful for people when they know that there's a cause and that there's gonna be a return to normalcy. And perfect segue, that question that this is this isn't something unique to COVID as a virus no so uh, when, when I heard from you earlier today I was excited because you asked me about something that we see all the time we see telogen effluvium um, I would say maybe every other or every third day I see at least two patients with hair loss a day and in fact you know I created a, a hair loss handout because it's such a common thing that we see in the clinic and there's you know a number of causes, a number of different uh, types of hair loss. Uh, the most common uh, cause of hair loss is pattern hair loss. So you've seen male pattern baldness, or there's a female pattern loss, and and typically that's you know in the temples and in the back of the scalp. And for all the different types of hair loss, depending on the cause, uh, there there are treatments, and uh, there's so many great treatments uh, once you know what the cause is that that you can really improve somebody's life. I understand too you have some other options um, that people can come in and see you about, some demonstrations. Yeah, so I, I have my hair helmet here. This is the Theradome helmet. Thanks, okay. And th 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 this is a laser light that, that somebody could use. They could put this on uh, their head. They do it a couple times a week when they have a pattern type of loss. Usually this is good for a pattern loss. We have uh, you know, platelet-rich plasma. We can draw your blood, separate out the red cells, the white cells, the platelets, the platelet-rich plasma. And uh, this is a brochure uh, from the company. But you can see, uh, you know, it talks about uh, the different um, you know, types of results that you can see with it. Uh, platelet-rich plasma uses your body's own platelets. It's, it's FDA cleared, meaning that we can do it and uh, you use your own platelets, which when you cut yourself, the platelets go in and they clot and they release growth factors to regrow collagen, blood vessels, and hair. So we're tricking the body by using this concentrated amount of platelets to regrow hair. So that's something really cool. Um, we have right behind me here, this hydrofacial machine. Uh, hydrofacial is typically used on the face and JLo just became the new uh, advocate for hydrofacial, but you can also use hydrofacial in the scalp. And that's been shown also to uh, help uh, stimulate hair growth. So this is from the hydrofacial people. There's uh, the FDA approved treatment for male pattern loss is Propecia. There's also Rogaine for men. That's also FDA approved. There's um, vitamin supplements like Nutrafol, uh, which is, are antioxidants. There's Viviscal, which is fish scale extract. Uh, there's so many options uh, for hair loss that it's a good time to have hair loss. And when I uh, spoke before on the news, when Chris Rock was slapped and they were talking about alopecia areata, there's some new, what are called JAK inhibitors, which is a new class of drug uh, for, um, it's, it's FDA approved for eczema and some other conditions, but they're, they're doing trials for these JAK inhibitors for hair loss. Like I said, great time for hair loss. <laughs> 
Well, anything else that I did not ask you that you would like to add in? Uh, yeah, uh, for different, you know, again, for different types of hair loss, people ask, you know, what's the best thing? And I liken it to, if I go into the gym and there's 20 pieces of exercise equipment and I want to get strong, which piece should I use? And the answer is, you should use all 20 pieces. If you have hair loss, you can never have enough hair. So do everything. There, there are these hair growth shampoos even, you know, like Retress is a shampoo that we recommend in the clinic. Um, so do the vitamins, do the Retress, do the uh, platelet-rich plasma, do the hydrofacial, wear, wear the helmet. Yes, it may look ridiculous, but you know, if you want more hair, you're gonna do everything that you can. And uh, the most important thing would be to get a workup from either a board certified dermatologist or somebody knows what they're doing with hair because you know, it may be that you have anemia and that's why you have hair loss. So you need to search for an underlying systemic cause uh, before you just blow it off and say, oh, that's male pattern loss or that's telogen effluvium. You really need to do, do some uh, checking out of what the possible etiologies are of hair loss. Thank you, Dr. Greenberg. I'll end the recording now. Recording stopped. And then this is actually 